Hi, and welcome to the Unknown Secrets of SEO Podcast. All right, welcome back to another fun-filled edition of the Unknown Secrets of SEO Podcast. This is podcast number 38. My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWebStyle. And this is Paul Hansen, sales manager of eWebStyle. So great of you to join us. Uh, actually, on the video, we don't have anybody watching yet, so <laughs> uh, so that we get you next time. Well, you we're can, watching. You can see us live on Ustream. Uh, at 9.15 on Friday mornings, we uh, actually record our uh, podcast on video, and uh, and then we get it out later as a podcast on iTunes and other services, uh, podcasting services. So uh, if you have, uh, if you want to see us live, we're here. You can actually see the videos of our previous podcasts, and uh, you can find those at Ustream. Once you get to Ustream.com, actually transfers you over to Ustream.tv. I bet you didn't know that. Paul? I did not know that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's uh, busy, busily working on pulling up some uh, incredibly interesting news for you. Um, so go to ustream.com and then search for eWebStyle and I think you need to search for e-webstyle. I'd give the URL, but the URL is really, really long. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not something that I want to get over. Um, in fact, every time, just, just before we go on air, we actually tweet the fact that we're about to go on air. So you can actually uh, sign up and follow us on Twitter. Uh, that's twitter.com slash eWebStyle. That eWebStyle does not have a dash. Uh, you should recognize our logo and everything there. Start following us, and then you will be reminded uh, that we're about to do a show so that you can tune in and that will have a link with it. You can also follow us on Facebook. Uh, the easiest way to get to us on Facebook also has a very long URL so we made a nice easy method. Go to e-webstyle.com slash Facebook and that will automatically take you to our Facebook page and you can become an e-webstyle groupie. <laughs> I mean, stalker. Speaking of groupie. Follower. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm looking through the news today. Some funny, odd, random news that came out today on the AP News Press. The title is, Sex Toy Study at Duke University Raises Some Eyebrows. So, man, where was this when I was in college? Yeah, they never okay. had any sex toy <laughs> studies. And... A religious leader at the campus of Duke University is unhappy about a study at the university or Duke University that invites female students to attend parties where they can buy sex toys. Wow, sponsored by the university. All, I, all I'm thinking now is uh, Revenge of the Nerds and cameras. Hidden, <laughs> hidden cameras. That's, that's all I'm thinking of right now. <laughs> and the little Asian guy. Oh, we want muff. What? <laughs> <laughs> we want muff. <laughs> here's uh, here's something. Uh, uh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, another thing out of the news I just found uh, came out yesterday. There was a design flaw in Indiana uh, jail that allowed inmates to leave their cells. They were altering a part of the jail, uh, they were redesigning a new part of the uh, jail system, and uh, it basically allowed people to crawl out of their cells. You know, this is another, this is just another horrible thing that Microsoft has brought upon us. <laughs> because what, what of about Microsoft, Windows 7? <laughs> because of Microsoft, now it's acceptable for our jail systems to have bugs, right? You know what? If if, if Mac was the predominant uh, oh, uh, operating man, it'd be system, they never it, get out of jail. There's no way out, right? There's, they're, they're, they'd be trying to figure out how to get them out. Uh, that's, I don't know. That's, pretty, uh, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty crazy. All right, so what we covered last in our last podcast, um, we actually started going over the lyrics for Design Coding, which is a rap by Mo Sirius, also known as Chuck, also known as Charles. Um, he wasn't able to be with us today, so uh, we're going to continue going over that for the rest of today. I also wanted to talk about, well, we wanted to read our reviews. It's yeah. shout out time. It is. It's shout out time. I got everything over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Where's the lyrics? The lyrics are right there. Okay. Yeah, here, you can hold these. You right. seem to want to hold some. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we're ready to go now. We got a really nice email from Dean Calhoun. He's with Affigility. And that's Affigility. A. Yeah, A F F Y G I L I T Y. 
Uh, and he says uh, he's been enjoying our podcast for three months. That's great. Thank you so much, Dean, for listening. Um, he's trying not to focus on page rank. It's interesting because we were uh, we were just talking about that. I think two podcasts ago. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, it doesn't really. He actually said his page rank went down from three to two. It didn't seem to matter because he's uh, still at the top three or four in the SERPs for his keywords that he's chosen. Um, Dean, I glanced at your website. Uh, you you have a, a very I think it's a very niche market. Um, get, send us some keywords. Yes, we'll be happy to give you some backlink love. Uh, we're just that kind of, uh, we're that easy, actually. <laughs> we're, we're just that easy. That e- All you got to do is ask, and we'll give you some. <laughs> um, but let's make that backlink love a little more powerful. You've been listening to our podcast, so you know something like, um, I don't know, healthcare services, which is too generic for what you guys do. But something like that is going to be better than just us pointing to affagility.com. So uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for sending us an email. Uh, and you know, actually about the po- the page rank. Um, remember, we were talking the other day. Uh, Google recently pulled page rank off of uh, the Webmaster Tools, and uh, and it was actually Charles was saying that they that uh, that they pulled it off. I don't know if his statement was that they're no longer using it. I doubt that they're no longer using it. I think they're still using it in their algorithm. I just think they're not uh, they're not publishing it so people can't use it to try and market their websites and, you know, sell backlinks. If you've got a really mm-hmm. great page rank, what uh, what we found is people are trying to sell links off of those great pages uh, and Google in trying to control that has said, "You know what? We're just not going to let you know what your page rank is." So Go ahead and good luck selling it. So no more page rank. That so, sucks. so I do think it's still important. I think it's an important part of their algorithm. I just don't think we have it. And just like Dean said, he dropped in page rank, uh, but he still, you know, positions three and four uh, on the search engine result pages uh, for his keywords. So um, don't worry about page rank. In fact, you can't because you yeah, can't even you know can, what it is. So, you don't, yeah. there <laughs> so it is. Um, you know, stay focused. If if uh, if you're not sure how to get on the first page of Google, then you have approximately 37 other podcasts to listen to. Uh, go back and listen to all our podcasts because we tell you how to do it. Uh, we do it well. We do it strong, and it's free if you listen to our podcast and implement. So. Go ahead and do that. We've got a couple more we had been requesting, and we still request. If you guys are getting any good information from this podcast, please, however you signed up, if you signed up on iTunes, you know what? Even if you didn't sign up on iTunes, go create an iTunes account and submit <laughs> a, um, a review uh, about, our, uh, about our podcast because we've got three reviews here. And I'm gonna. You, you want to jump in? Any one of these your favorite that you want to read uh, here? I, I like uh, from Wonder Nate. Nate D-O-double-G. What up, Nate? Uh, Nate, read us a review. Says, I was told about this from my brother-in-law, who's one of those rich and successful people that you get really jealous of. It was a great recommendation, very informative, which would be enough by itself, but they are fun and laid back, and you feel like you're hanging out with them shooting a the breeze about the internet. So that was cool, man. Thanks, Nate. We, we appreciate that. We like that, Nate. We've got uh, Dr. Video said, real solid info, no hype. I think we may even mention that one before. Mm-hmm. And I like this one. Uh, keeping the workplace fun. That's that's what we do, right? Yeah. We're try good to keep at it light, try to keep it fun. Uh, I was talked to, uh, told about this by my boss and Wonder Nate actually told him and instantly found the podcast and it fit my needs and listening style. I'm not one to sit and listen to someone uh, that's all work and no play. These guys combine the right amount of uh, both in their 30 minute podcast. Not only that, but they actually work at answering your questions and do so in a timely manner. You hear that? So Dean is going to get a little bit of link love. Come on, you guys. Keep sending in questions. Keep sending in emails. Uh, not only will we answer those emails, but uh, you know we also usually end up pointing our customers and uh, our listeners in your direction. So that's going to have some significant link value. Um, so great. If you are getting value out of this podcast, please go to iTunes or some other uh, place where you can write a review link to us. There's lots of ways to do that. You can find our webca- podcast actually on our blog, which is at e-webstyle.com. And then just go to the homepage and click the blog because I don't need to give out the whole URL yeah. on that okay. one. All right. So um, I think we're ready to get, you know, I wanted to mention one other thing. This has been, this happened a while back. Um, and Yahoo closed GeoCities. I don't know if you remember what yeah, GeoCities. Yeah, you, you read, you said that to me. I haven't actually used GeoCities 
it, if you go back, GeoCities is one of those College. free, you know, free web services. You could have a, actually ha, actually have a website for free. And if you th think, you know, I'm sure there's lots of other services out there that are still doing that. If you think there's that that's worth doing, you really need to go back and listen to some of our podcasts because we talk about um, hosting your website for free and the value or lack of value in doing that. So uh, go back and listen to that. Anyway, I was really surprised because GeoCities was getting like 1.5 million, million hits a month, right? And this is these are new hits a month. And instead of selling it, they just closed it. That I thought was kind of weird. Like, why wouldn't you just pawn it off to a small... I mean, that's what usually what a lot of companies do whenever they're, uh, you know, I guess when they're... I guess I, I can't think of a general example, but you just sell it off. That's what I was thinking. I know uh, my, my experience has come from corporate America. I know AT&T does that all the time. Whenever they had a product that's just they're not really interested in or not really working, they'll just sell it to a smaller company. They'll take it and run with it. Yeah. Well, and so I don't I don't know what the thinking was. I know that now they have a service. That they're offering kind of the same service at a, at a fairly inexpensive price. Uh, but you think they would have, like, transitioned them or something that's very yeah, strange. I don't know. Yeah, I thought yeah. I'd bring If anybody's got any kind of a pontification on why uh, Yahoo closed GeoCities instead of actually spinning it off or – uh, trying to convert all of them to, or you know, whatever, ten percent to paying customers, because they're pushing their own hosting now, aren't they? Yeah, you know, yeah. Yahoo hosting, like. So why not what's roll the it, keep it together, and <laughs> roll it, and then transition it slowly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It's very, very strange. Uh, and again, one point five million hits. You know, there's a lot of people out there who would love to have one point five million hits. Uh, okay, let. Uh, well, I guess it, in the grand scheme of things, they're like, all right, whatever. Yeah, we get one. You know, we get one point five million a day. Yeah, yeah we get whatever. ten times this on our other stuff. We can afford to lose. It, it just falls off the map. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's let's hop right into uh, into Mo Sirius's lyrics here. Uh, we actually only got through the first two verses last yes. time. So got through the. If you were not here last time, then you should have been. Go back and listen to podcast number seven, or you can actually go back and watch podcast number 37 yes. and you can watch that at Ustream uh, we're going to have these podcasts uh, available uh, in video uh, at Ustream so you can watch them while you know while you're working while you're there on lunch go. break or something alright mm -hmm. next verse design coding um, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I don't know I was like uh He's having a breakdown. <laughs> I just I just drew a blank here for a second. All right. You can't, okay, the word is <laughs> move. move. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, and quoting from Mo Serious, he says, Move into production. Please follow these instructions. Your Photoshop functions, slice that design. Do the layout with divs. Make the way, sure there's a that, line. Do you know what that means? Slice that design? No, I have no idea no what idea. that means. Yeah, just ask Javier. He's our graphic designer. You can ask him. He'll tell you. Basically, uh, you make Javier. A, <laughs> oh, he's not here he's yet. He's not here yet. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, take an, you take an image. You create one complete image of what you want the website to look like. And then you use what, what's called slicing to slice it up so that you can address each image individually and turn images into buttons instead of having them be one image. So oh, okay. It's pretty interesting. I had no idea. I thought I've it was never just like, done it. I, just I thought know it was just like what saying, it's called. slice it. I was slice like, all right, it. I'll slice that design. <laughs> all right, so your Photoshop functions, you want to slice that design, do your layout with divs, make sure there's a line. Please don't use tables, even though they work fine. When it comes to indexing, they give searchers a hard time. Uh, well, what are divs? I have no idea what divs, divs. are. Divs is like a division, so you can actually hide divisions. <laughs> Okay. Uh, maybe you've seen some place where you click something and the division opens up right on your website real quickly. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's got a couple it, it advantages. It can be hidden. You don't want to use it to hide text, but it is also text that a search engine should see. So uh, it's, it's a way to incorporate kind of more text and make it available to the user if he wants to look at it. You can also hide images. Um, it's really crafty to use it in forms. Uh, okay. If you want to hide, you know, say you just want to, have a form that appears like you're only giving. I'm giving a little secret here. Okay. A form that appears like you only need their username, you know, their first name, their last name, and email address. And then when they click the next button, boom! Oh. <laughs> now they need mother's maiden name, yeah. <laughs> like a blood sample, please. a blood sample, everything. So okay, yeah, um, I've seen that. A, that's what a div does. Okay, so you need to make sure that you're using divs, and you need to make sure that there's a line. Uh, don't use tables, even though they work fine. We've talked about that several times. I mean. 
I'm a, it's rarely the, it's rare that I see a website made with tables actually, or maybe I can't see yeah, the table. You, you actually see them all the time. Most of the time we do them here and it was actually this line that caused me to go back and do some research um, and if you do some research on tables and SEO, you'll actually find that there's no, I, there's actually no general consensus on whether tables are good or bad. They do have, there are some drawbacks to them. Um, one of them is, is, is that some of the browsers will not show anything in a table until the whole table has loaded, which kind of makes sense because the table has, you know, rows and columns and everything. And until the whole table is loaded, the page doesn't know how to display it. And you can see that if you go into Firefox, Firefox will show you everything it has immediately. And then, you know, the whole page will be juxtapositioning around and formatting and getting all straightened out. I don't know if you've ever seen that happen before, Paul. Mm -hmm. No. So, um, so all of that will happen. And, um, you know, so it could, can be a little disconcerting to the customer, uh, to the visitor. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as SEO goes, I haven't found anything conclusive that says, tables are bad for SEO so mo it's a great rhyme it, uh, it is it is a great rhyme. I called him mo right? yeah or whatever you're gonna keep calling <laughs> mo serious Charles Chuck uh, it is a great rhyme okay now uh, next part of this verse says make it easy for spiders to crawl where you provide remove font type font color and font size no background colors keep your coding real neat and add your looking and tag your look and feel on a separate style sheet uh, better results with XMI and CSS. Now you're making progress a little closer to success. Describe what doc type so the browser browser can relate and make sure you do it great or it won't validate. Uh, where do we begin? All right, so, make it so easy, easy for spiders to crawl. What yeah. do you provide? Obviously, everybody understands that. In fact, that's one of the first things we do as an SEO company. As soon as we get a website, we want to make sure that you you know if you're using all of your um, all of your navigation and Flash. Or if it's JavaScript that we're not 100% sure that the the search engines will navigate, then we actually want to make that's the that's the first step. Because if the search engines can't find your relevant information, if they can't find your pages, then you know what good is it? And you don't end up on the first page of Google. Google, yeah, <laughs> which we get paid to do, so that's our that's our first focus. Um, so remove your font type, your font color, and font size. No background color. No background colors. Keep your coding really neat. Keep it, yeah, you just want a clean, easy look for your website. Um, and actually, some of this stuff I'd like to get. I, w I was hoping, uh, Chuck, we were hoping he would be in here today. Maybe he's tuning into the video right now. Hey, Chuck, if you are, uh, I know he was a little bit busy this morning. Uh, but uh, I'd like to ask him some questions about these because, you know, some of these I'm, you know, I, I'm comfortable using. And maybe there's just some other reasons that he would want. So I'd like to get that input. And like I said, uh, I don't know everything about uh, about XMI uh, and versus uh, I know CSS cascade style sheets, uh, but there these are nuances that I, I didn't I don't think really affect SEO per se. They're probably more about visibility and usability. So I'd like to get his uh, input on that. Um, of course, validate is pretty important. To make sure you do it great or it won't validate because. There's to validate your code. There's uh, services out there. You can actually go to Google and you can type in, uh, val you know, search engine validate. And there's lots of free services out there that will actually look at your website and make sure that it validates. And and by validate, you want to make sure that you have your open and your close tags and everything in your HTML is done correctly so that the search engines will actually, again, visit your website. I assume that like invalidated. That's kind of like is that with like if you're building your own website. So if you're if you're using a program, not like a do I mean like if you're using like a notepad instead of not like I mean like a easy web design program, would they have that function or is that more with like a Photoshop? So any any program? reasonable des web design program should be creating valid HTML code, okay. right? As it works, but sometimes you know you start some people get up into the source code and I like to get on the source oh, code and, and make doing their tweaks. own. Oh. Okay. And if I make a mistake there, the the package that we use might not be able to catch that mistake. You put it online and you validate and, and you'll find it out. The other thing is, is you can put a whole website together and you post it up there and it validates. Sometimes the term validating a website will actually apply to making sure that all the links are, are, are you know, that there are any what are called dead links, you know. So maybe your homepage used to link to you know, we were talking about this recently, SEO Houston, and we decided that we wanted to change that page to Internet Marketing Houston. 
Well, if we still have links to SEO Houston and that page no longer exists, that's a dead link. Okay. And so validating is, is part of that. That's why you want to make sure you do that great. And that's, again, that's you know just something that we do on a daily basis here here at eWebStyle. Okay, next, uh, brow next verse. All right, checking all browsers. I do it directly. Got to make sure that it renders correctly. All right, so that's Excuse good. Me. Well, yeah, go ahead and finish the next uh, two. Some use IE, others use Flock, which I have not heard of. I have not heard phone. of either. Uh, and uh, some use AOL. I use Firefox, just like I do. Uh, title everything, including links and images. Don't use italics. Use emphasis. Don't use bold. My favorite line. Don't, Don't use, use bold. bold. Please, Please use, use strong. Because if you use bold, bold it's old and wrong. wrong. That's my favorite line. Chuck, I sang that in the shower last week. That's no joke. I don't think Chuck wanted to know that. <laughs> I love that line. All right, so you know, I assume he says, check in all browsers, make sure that your website appears and looks and functions properly in all browsers. Well, just like I was talking, there are differences between IE and Firefox, right? So yes. it's going to render, it's going to display the page differently on the different search engines. So you really do want to check. You know, when we first started in this business, all we did was design for Netscape. And then we had to transition and actually design both for IE and Netscape. Mm -hmm. And then we only had to design for IE because almost nobody used Netscape. And and now we're having to transition to Firefox, Firefox. IE, and Chrome, and, and Safari, and Flock. Yeah, I've never even... I've never heard of Flock. I've never heard of Flock. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to Google that. Somebody who uses Flock out there and is listening to this podcast... Send us an email. Yeah, please. Let me know what that is. I'm assuming Chuck at least knows what it is, uh, you know, since he wrote the lyrics. But we want to hear from somebody out there who actually uses it and why do you use it and uh, is it just because you're maybe anti-establishment and you want to use it or, you know, what is what is the reason that you're using it and uh, so we can get you on air. Um, All right. He says, don't use italics. Use emphasis. And that's just, uh, you can use uh, the, 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 the actual tag inside HTML, the actual code is uh, is an I for italics, and what we're supposed to be using is EM for emphasis. And don't use bold, use strong. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's, a, again, the old one is B, and the new one is strong. strong. So uh, we we're supposed to move on to the new one. Apparently, remember, that was done in, what was it, 94? 94, uh, no, uh, 04. <laughs> o 04. 04, yeah, yeah, I remember that. All right, next verse, it says, use CSS, to, your page should load quicker. Your client's satisfied and they're eating like they're eating on a snicker. Awesome line. Uh, they're stuck on your page like you made it with the stickers and then they convert. Now that's the real kicker. So use CSS is going to make your pages load faster, uh, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, so what, what, what a CSS will do is it's, it's again, it, it refers to cascade style sheets. So you can, if you wanted to find different, uh, let's say you want to have. Um, a web page that's oscillating every other line. This is going to sound retarded, but work, just follow me here. Every other line is a different font and a different size, right? So if you don't use a cascade style sheet, you actually have to define the font and the size on each line. So if you had hundreds of lines, every fourth line, well, every single line, you have to define it because you want every line, other line to be different. Mm -hmm. So all the text associated with the font that you're using and the size that you're using is duplicated over and over and over and over again. Uh, now, if you just use a Cascade style sheet, you actually define that four times mm -hmm. and then you reference it on each of the lines that you're doing the text on. Okay, so that really short see. reference is a lot less text and that's you know the amount of text is faster that, that assume it makes it faster that does indeed make it faster so i got um, you know um so and i, I want to get on a soapbox about making your pages load faster and the reason because i got an, a question uh last week from a guy that asked something he asked me is it best to use hd images and hd video on your website <clears throat> And I was like, you know, I'm not really sure. Let me speak with my graphic artist. And he says, well, and this was an attorney that we're working with. And he says, I don't think it's necessary for this particular case. It would be one thing if he was in an industry where they needed to see his face and they needed to see all of the stuff with him. But he says, in this case, I think he can pass on it because I think having high definition images and high definition videos on his website will slow down the loading of his website and that will dra dra drastically affect um, the load time. Yeah, his yeah. load time. And so he was like, in this case, 
I don't think it's necessary. Well, so, you, you can think of a case where it would be, you know, if you're maybe you're in production, maybe you're in video production, uh -huh. and you need to show the quality of what you're I, doing. I definitely would. I definitely would. Uh, if you are in the adult industry, because I'm sure there's somebody that listens that is, that would be in the scenario, a scenario where I'd say yes. You probably because your you, your videos and images are what bring you traffic. So I'd say yes. So for Paul's attorney, professional opinion on porn. Is HD. There you go. All right. There you go. I mean, because you know, I run a little porn consulting on the side. You know? <laughs> so, in case you're wondering about that, should I switch? You know, you want to take that into mind. If you do switch to HD images and videos, it will make your page load uh, longer. So, just remember that. Uh, all right. Next verse, it says, uh, then it's stuck on your page. I, I like that. Yeah, they're Snickers. stuck in your page like a uh, like, like a sticker. Like you made it with a sticker, and, and then that, they convert. And now that's the real kicker. And, that's and we talk kicker. about that. That's that's back to Sevo search engine visitor optimization. That's you know that's what we talk about. We've actually coined that term here at eWebStyle, um, search engine visitor optimization. Because again, it, you know for us it's a, it's an easy thing to get website to your website. Uh, but what do you do after you get that traffic? You know, what do you do when you get your your the, the people to visit your website? What are your calls to action? What are you doing to convert them? What are you doing to 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 take the effort that you've made to get them to your website and turn it into actual value for your business? Uh, and so that is the real kicker. That is definitely the real. I mean, and that's why we're here. That's seriously why we're here. You know, uh, unique visitors are great. But and being on the first page of Google is awesome. But hey, I mean, we're all looking for business here. That, that's that's the that's the whole point of your marketing campaign is to bring in business. All right, next verse says, "Make you a little richer, your site a little slicker." Design and code right, man. I hope you get the picture. What I'm telling you is true, man. It should be a scripture. If it's built right, you'll be the pick of the litter. Everyone will want to follow you like Twitter. Competition will get bitter. You'll shine. You'll shine like glitter. Uh, you're, if you're trying to grow now, your company will get bigger. Design a code right, man. Can you get with it? So that was the last two verses. So basically, if you follow all this stuff, uh, uh, people will want to follow you like Twitter, <laughs> you know, which is awesome, man. I, and you'll, you'll be the pick of the litter. And, I, and remember, <laughs> Mo, uh, Mo, Mo Serious, remember Chuck gave us a... Uh, uh, a little, it was two two podcasts ago. Two, he gave yeah. us a couple couple little couple secrets, free tips regarding Twitter and Facebook and whatever. So go back and listen to that. That's going to be podcast number thirty six. Um, this is an awesome rap though, and I we, we took two podcasts to go over it. Uh, I hope you guys go out there and just type Google design code design and coding rap lyrics. I think that's how we found these, but. They're they're informational. They're accurate. They it's it's good stuff, and it's you know it's a fun, it's a cool rap, and hopefully we'll put we can uh, get get a video up or on our side or something like that. Yeah, we'll we'll um, yeah make sure you can you can I think you can find those uh, all the videos all the rap videos that uh, Chuck has done at the SEO rapper, so you can find them over there and uh, go check those out. Remember, you can, this is the end of our podcast actually, mm -hmm. so this is pretty good timing. Uh, remember, you can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash ewebstyle. Find us on Facebook, e-webstyle.com slash Facebook. Send us an email, we haven't given the email out yet today. Mm -hmm. Podcast at e-webstyle.com. And you know what, you can always call us at 713-592-6724. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, thank you guys for listening. This is has been another wonderful podcast. Tune in for our next wonderful podcast. Until next time, I'm Chris Burris. And this is Paul Hansen. Bye-bye for now.